Is it possible for moons to have their own moons? Moons are incredible natural satellites that orbit planets and other celestial objects. While the majority of moons circle planets, several also orbit asteroids and Kuiper Belt objects. But do moons of moons exist? Is it feasible to have a system in which moons orbit other moons? This question has a more nuanced answer than it appears, but don't worry, we've got you covered in this video. Let us try to approach this subject via the lenses of science and theory. Hello and welcome to Z. Subscribe the channel and follow us. Moons are believed to arise when a planet or object collides with a massive object, such as a comet. The collision forms a debris field, which later coalesces into a moon. The majority of moons are less than a tenth the size of the body they orbit. Only two planets in our solar system, Mercury and Venus, do not have moons. But why? Don't worry, we'll address that question later in this video, which will help us understand the initial question regarding moons of moons. The gas giants are massive and stable, with dozens of moons surrounding them. Can all of these planets' moons have moons? The answers are yes and no. Don't be intimidated by our response, simply follow along in the video and you'll understand. Most planets have moons around them, and some Kuiper Belt objects and asteroids have natural satellites as well. There are, however, no known moons of moons out there. It's possible that it's not just bad luck, there could be some fundamentally essential astrophysical constraints that make it extremely impossible for such a thing to survive indefinitely. Moons of moons may be difficult to generate since moons are normally much smaller than the bodies they circle. This means that the moon's gravitational pull on the body it orbits is far smaller than the gravitational force between the body and the object it orbits. As a result, the larger body that moons orbit is continuously pulling them out of orbit. Another reason moons of moons would be difficult to produce is that they would be pummeled by material from the larger moon they circle. The moon would eventually be broken up by this debris, making it harder for it to maintain a stable orbit. However, this does not preclude their existence. Everything appears simple when all you have to consider is a single, massive object in space. You'd expect that since gravity is the only force at work, you could put any object into a stable, elliptical, or circular orbit around it. You'd think it could go on eternally in that setup. However, there are other forces at play, such as one, this item may be surrounded by an atmosphere or a diffuse halo of particles. Two, this thing is not always motionless, but it can rotate swiftly about an axis. Three, this issue might not be as isolated as you first assumed. The presence of an atmosphere has an effect on objects that circle around a central mass. Even a very diffuse atmosphere can lead orbiting things to collide with atoms and particles. This can cause the objects to collide with the core mass. The first factor, an environment, is only applicable in the most extreme cases. An object orbiting a large, solid world with no atmosphere would normally simply avoid the object's surface and might continue to rotate around it endlessly. With the presence of an atmosphere, even if it is relatively diffuse, any circling entities will have to contend with the atoms and particles that surround the core mass. In some cases, this can cause the item's trajectory to change and it to collide with the core mass. As a result, while computing object orbits, the presence of an atmosphere must be considered. It is widely assumed that atmospheres have an end, after which space begins. In actuality, as height increases, atmospheres simply thin out. The Earth's atmosphere, for example, stretches for hundreds of kilometers. The International Space Station orbits within Earth's atmosphere and will eventually disintegrate and burn up unless constantly boosted. Similarly, over billions of years in the solar system, orbiting things must be a specific distance away from whatever mass they circle in order to be in a safe orbit. This is because celestial object atmospheres can stretch considerably further than previously anticipated. 
As a result, while planning expeditions to other planets or moons, it is critical to consider the possibility that their atmospheres extend much further than previously assumed. We know from our second factor that a celestial object can revolve. This is true for both the massive mass and the smaller mass that surrounds it. There is a stable posture in which both masses are tidally locked to one another. They always face the same side, but any other arrangement will result in torquing. This torque may spiral the two masses inwards if the rotation is too slow or outwards if the rotation is too fast for locking to occur. In other words, most satellites do not start out in the best possible configuration. But there's one more thing to consider before we get to the topic of moons of moons and figure out where the problem is. The fact that an object is not isolated is critical. Maintaining an object in orbit around a single mass such as a moon circling a planet, a tiny asteroid orbiting a massive one, or Charon orbiting Pluto is significantly easier than maintaining an object in orbit around a mass that circles another mass. This is an important factor that we rarely consider. Consider it from the perspective of Mercury, our innermost, moonless planet. Mercury's orbit around the Sun is relatively fast, hence the gravitational and tidal forces operating on Mercury are very strong. If another object were to orbit Mercury, the number of variables involved would skyrocket. The Sun's wind, the outward flow of particles, would collide with both Mercury and the circling object, disrupting their orbits. Furthermore, the heat emitted by the Sun on Mercury's surface has the potential to expand the planet's atmosphere. Even though Mercury has little air, particles on its surface can be heated and flung into space, resulting in a weak but not insignificant atmosphere. Finally, the presence of the third mass produces a circumstance in which Mercury may become locked to the Sun due to the tidal forces present. Mercury's orbit is thus intricate and fascinating, making it an intriguing object to study. This suggests that there are two possible places for a Mercury satellite. If the satellite becomes too close to Mercury in any of the following ways, the satellite isn't rotating fast enough for its distance, Mercury isn't rotating fast enough to establish tidal lock with the Sun, it's subjected to too much friction from Mercury's atmosphere. Based on the stated conditions, the spacecraft will crash onto the planet's surface. Although a satellite in orbit around Mercury may experience some stability as a result of the planet's gravity, a number of conditions could lead the satellite to be expelled from orbit. If the satellite is too far away from Mercury, the planet's gravity may force it away. Furthermore, the satellite may be evicted if it rotates too swiftly for its distance or if Mercury rotates too quickly to become blocked with the Sun. Finally, perturbative effects from other planets or solar heating could be used to evict a tenuously held moon or satellite. If this is the case, how can planets have moons if they orbit the Sun? As previously stated, a three-body system is never fully stable. There are, however, factors that can make it more stable over billions of years. One of the most crucial criteria is the planet's or asteroid's distance from the Sun. If it's too close, the solar wind, sunlight, and tidal forces of the sun will all be too great and destabilize the system. However, if it is too far away, the satellite will be too loosely linked gravitationally and will be thrown out by other gravitational or mechanical forces. The sweet spot is somewhere in the middle when these disruptive factors are kept to a minimum. If the planet-slash-satellite asteroid is sufficiently far from the main body, tidal, frictional, or other forces will not cause it to inspiral and collide with it. A three-body system can be stable for billions of years under these conditions. As one might assume, there is a sweet spot for moons to exist around planets, a few times the planet's radius away, but close enough that the orbital period isn't too long, still far shorter than the orbital period of the planet around its star. So, given all of this, where are our solar system's moon satellites? The biggest moons are the best options for satellite habitation. Moon satellites are significantly more likely to be in stable orbits and tidally locked to their home globe. None of these, however, are now recognized as moons of Jupiter. 
There is yet hope for one in the future, although it is improbable. The gas giant worlds are quite stable and are located far from the sun. They have an abundance of moons, many of which are already tidally locked to their parent world. The optimal possibilities would be as huge as feasible, reasonably close to the parent body to limit the chance of inspiral, but not so close that an easy ejection is possible and well separated from any other moons, rings, or satellites that could disrupt your system. The moons of gas giants such as Callisto, Ganymede, Iapetus, Titania, and Oberon may be among the finest candidates for moons in our solar system. But, having said that, it's fascinating to consider the potential of a moon of a moon orbiting a gas giant planet, but the conditions required for that to arise are so extreme that we're unlikely to find one. The moon would have to orbit the planet at a huge distance, be isolated from other massive masses, and have a high escape velocity from the planet's surface. These criteria indicate that Iapetus and Triton are the most plausible possibilities for a moon of a moon. Even if they exist, they would be extremely difficult to detect and investigate. While the concept of a moon of a moon is intriguing, it's probably best not to get our hopes up. Or it's possible that our understanding of this concept is incorrect, and our best opportunity will be in the Kuiper Belt or possibly the Oort Cloud, where we simply have much more opportunities than we'd ever have in our solar system. Whatever it is, the concept of having such intricate systems is intriguing. Even if we don't find such a satellite in our solar system, they may exist in a few uncommon star systems. So what are your thoughts on the concept of moons having moons? Are they possible in our solar system? Please let me know in the comments section below, and don't forget to check out our other videos about our solar system. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.